मातंगिनी हाजरा द लेडी गांधी ऑफ इंडिया अ वुमन ऑफ हम्बल येट अनकनवेंशनल ओरिजिन अनरेलेंटिंग एंड जेनरस नेचर वॉज अ बीकन ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ होप एंड सेल्वेशन फॉर हर कंट्रीमैन शी वेहमेंटली वेंट बियॉन्ड द कन्फाइंस दट ओल्ड एज प्लेस्ड ऑन हर फ्रेल बॉडी डिफाइंग द आर्बिट्ररी रूल्स एंड रेस्ट्रिक्शंस इम्पोज अपॉन हर एंड विक्टोरियसली इमर्जिंग एज अ ट्रू पेट्रियट विलिंग to sacrifice her life for the happiness of her people and the security of her nation equal parts warrior and humanitarian she made innumerable contributions both on and off the battlefield for the betterment of her country her passion for justice and generosity of spirit knew no bounds this is the story of matangini hazra who dedicated her life without hesitation to her nation's quest for independence so that her people could have brighter future free of fear and oppression early life and education brought up in a poverty stricken and disadvantaged household matangini hasra was born on 19th october 1869 or 1870 according to some records as matangini maiti to a peasant family in the hogla village located in the district of midnapur in west bengal such was the extent of impoverishment in her family that matangini could not afford the luxury of receiving even primary education and had to grow up untaught and illiterate all through her life the only way out for her back then was to get married to a wealthy person when she herself was simply a child as a result at the age of 12 she married trilochan hazra a rich and prosperous widower in his 60s however her short married life came to an abrupt end when she herself became widowed at the age of 18 with no child of her own this prompted her to return to her native village where she proceeded to live by herself engaging in social work till she made her entry into the political arena in 1905 political activities Matangini Hazra's initiation into the Indian independence movement came around the early 1900s when the nationalist movement was acquiring more and more momentum among the public the rising fervor for freedom from the british pulled matangini also into the movement and her social work that involved lending a helping hand to the people of her community transformed into helping her countrymen achieve their desired goals gandhi buri matangini joined the freedom struggle at a time when mahatma gandhi himself was actively heading the independence movement in a manner that ensured it spread to every nook and cranny of india and the indians he was traveling all across the country to maximize the effects of his political activities in midnapur matangini too was inspired by the efforts of gandhi ji and the gandhian beliefs this led her to adopt his policies and become an ardent gandhian follower thereby earning her the loving nickname of gandhi buri a bengali title that stood for old lady gandhi in 1905 there was active involvement of matangini as well as other ladies from the midnapur region which was considered as a notable characteristic of the indian independence movement civil disobedience movement one of the most notable events of the indian freedom struggle was the civil disobedience movement launched by mahatma gandhi on 12th march 1930 as a protest against the british who had introduced 
the Salt Act that banned Indians from collecting or selling salt. The movement was accompanied by the Salt March, also known as the Salt Satyagraha or Dandi March, which included marching 375 kilometers from the Sabarmati Ashram to the Dandi village in Gujarat. Matangini Hazra was also a participant of the civil disobedience movement in 1930. Upon reaching Dandi, Gandhiji broke the salt law as an act of defiance against the British laws. Matangini similarly broke the salt act and as a result was arrested by the authorities. However, she was released from jail immediately. Chauki Dari Tax Bandha. Following her arrest and subsequent release in relation to the civil disobedience movement, Matangini immediately took part in the Chauki Dari Tax Bandha movement. The movement was a form of protest against the Chauki Dari Tax Act that aimed at collecting tax from the local farmers and peasants in a village as a means of keeping the Chauki Dari well funded. These Chauki Daris acted as spies for the British government. When the civil disobedience movement was launched in 1930, the farmers took the collective decision to not pay the tax to the authorities. Matangini Hazra was also a participant of this movement. It was during this protest for the abolition of taxes that Matangini was again arrested by the police and this time was sent to prison for a period of six months. She served her jail sentence in the Baharampur prison, the reveling humanitarian. Post-release from jail after six months, Matangini Hazra became a permanent fixture of the Indian independence movement by taking on a much more active role through a non-violent strategy as adopted by Gandhi. She integrated herself more firmly into the Indian National Congress or INC party. Similarly, Matangini refused to use any and all foreign products and took up spinning khadi on her own. Additionally, she participated in the 1933 Subdivisional Congress meeting held at Serampur. However, the police rained down a severe baton charge upon the participants of the meeting and Matangini was seriously injured as a result of it. In another incident in 1933, in the presence of the Bengal governor, Sir John Anderson, Matangini successfully managed to evade the security present there to approach the governor and wave a black flag in front of him, shouting, Go back, Lat Sahib! Her brave act did not go unpunished as she was incarcerated again for a period of six months serving rigorous imprisonment. Her rebellion against the British Empire never affected or diminished her humanitarian nature. Even after her release from prison and involvement in the INC, she continued to aid those who needed her help in whatever form she could provide. One such instance was when she worked with those individuals who were struck by the smallpox epidemic that affected their lives and their health severely. Death 29 September 1942 was a black day for Indians and India as a whole. The day marked the loss of one of the most passionate and generous freedom fighters at the hands of the British forces. As part of her involvement in the Quit India movement, Matangini Hasra was engaged in a number of political activities. In order to oust the British from their region, the members of the Congress party took the decision to take over several government buildings, including the police stations in the district of Midnapur. A 72 years old Matangini was one of the lead protesters of the plan. On 29th September 1942, with an army of 6,000 people, 
that mostly consisted of women supporters Matangini Hasra carrying the national flag in one hand led them to their destination the Tamluk police station as the group reached the outskirts of the town the authorities ordered them to disperse immediately as they were breaking section 144 of the Indian Penal Code or IPC established by the British authorities. Paying no heed to the orders, Matangini proceeded with her movement, prompting the police to open fire on them in retaliation. As per reports, the first bullet hit Matangini in her arm. But she never stopped. With each step, she appealed to the police to not to shoot at them. But her efforts were in vain. Even when another bullet hit her in the forehead, she proudly held the tricolor flag high above the ground and chanted the phrase Vande Mataram repeatedly. A third bullet hit her, stopping her advances once and for all. Even when she succumbed to her critical injuries and fell down in a pool of her own blood, Matangini Hasra died the proud death of a warrior on a battlefield. Holding the unsoiled flag of her nation in her hands as a final act of revolt against the British regime. Legacy Once India regained her independence from the British rulers, her country honoured her sacrifices by naming several colonies, schools and streets after the courageous Matangini Hazra. One such road was named the Hazra Road in Kolkata. Additionally, her statue was put up on the Kolkata Maidan in the year 1977. It was the honour of being the first statue of a woman freedom fighter that was set up in Kolkata in an independent India. In 2002, the Indian Department of Posts had decided to celebrate 60 years of Quit India movement and the formation of the Tamluk National Government by issuing a series of postage stamps. A 5 rupee postage stamp bearing the portrait of Matangini Hazra was also issued by the department as a tribute to the legendary warrior. A biography film titled Matangini Hazra was produced by the film's division and released in the year 2011 in honor of the loving Gandhi Buri. Additionally, contributions were also made to her in the educational sector with the establishment of the Shaheed Matangini Hazra Government College for Women in West Bengal in 2015. Conclusion Matangini Hazra, with her free look and generous nature, was one of the most passionate and indomitable independence activists of the Indian freedom struggle. Her relentless pursuit for justice from the British supremacy and her unfathomable determination and dedication to the cause through the adoption of Gandhian principles earned her the name of Gandhi Buri, forever loved and respected by her people and her country. Matangini Hazra continues to live in the minds and hearts of her countrymen, for whom she wholeheartedly sacrificed her life to attain complete freedom.